to sequence drums in Ableton, you have a couple of options. Um, you can uh, click assign notes or you can play them in. And uh, I'll step through both, uh, both ways to do this. Uh, when you launch Ableton Live, and we are using the uh, Ableton Live 11 standard in our setup, uh, it'll open and it'll show you the uh, instrument browser, the uh, session view, and uh, a couple different regions down at the bottom. We're going to load an instrument into uh, arrangement view, which is tabbed over to the other side. So if we hit the tab key on the keyboard, it will toggle over to the other view. So the tab key will toggle between session and arrangement view. We are going to be using arrangement view for now. In arrangement view, you have tracks. All these tracks uh, are showing us the timeline at the top. We can zoom in and out by clicking in this gray area at the top and dragging upwards and downwards. And moving our mouse left and right, we can then scroll left and right by keeping the mouse button down. I'm going to scroll until I can see all four beats of measure one and all four beats of measure two, etc. Okay, um, so we can create a region in our first MIDI track by selecting the first measure and to create a click entry uh, MIDI sequencer, we're gonna hit Shift Command M. Shift Command M will provide for us a region with which we can click assign. Now notice that there's no sounds loaded here. So we're gonna go ahead into, into Instruments and we're gonna go into Impulse and we're gonna load an 808, which emulates the, t the Roland TR-808 that we've been learning about in class. If I load the TR-808 emulator called Impulse 808 and I record and enable the track, my keyboard controller will now make the sound. Since my keyboard controller will now make sound, that means that this instrument is loaded properly. If I go, if I click on this color bar once again, if I click on the color bar once again, I get back to my sequencer. Uh, so clicking on the title of the instrument on the right will open up its parameters. But if I click on the region, the color bar on the region, it's going to give me this. So now I can click notes into my grid in perfect time to create a basic backbeat. This grid can be either made bigger or smaller by hitting Command-1 or Command-2. Command-1 makes it smaller, Command-2 makes it bigger, and this is in a duple signature. If I wanted triplets, I would select Command-3, but I don't. So I'm gonna go Command-2, or I'm sorry, Command-1 to make this a little smaller, and so I can make closed uh, hi-hat sounds happen fast, like this, if I can click Assign. I'm also going to take a second and lower the tempo down to 80. Now, um, I can also hit the B key and write them in by clicking and dragging. If I hold down the B key, it toggles the pencil tool. The B key toggles the pencil tool. Okay, so those are kind of fast. I'm gonna go back and undo with Command-Z. I'm gonna to go to co uh, Command-2 to make this grid bigger. Hit the B key to draw a series of hi-hat sounds. Um, if I wanted to loop this sequence, I can go over here to my loop selector ribbon, shorten it to be my one measure region, and select the loop button at the top of my Ableton nav bar. Apparently it went back to 120, I'm not sure why, so I'm gonna lower that back down to 80. And as it's looping, I can make adjustments.
So once I have um, my sounds loaded and I turned on my loop button and I've selected the loop region with which I'd like to loop. Notice if I make this region, this ribbon go longer than my loop, this loop will continue for as long as this ribbon is active. So that's one way to create a drum sequence. If I wanted to loop this out in the timeline, that's not what this button does. To loop it out in the timeline, I need to activate this loop button in the sequencer. So remember that to find the sequencer, you double click on the ribbon at the top of the sequence. That gives us this view down here. If I click on this loop toggle down here, I'll now be able to loop this out over a series of measures. If that button is not selected and I go to drag outward, I'll just get more empty space. So that's not what I want. I want this to loop outward. So I'm going to click and drag outward. That'll give me eight measures of a loop. So if I want to hear my loop in, the, in time, I'll deactivate the loop button up here. And no matter what I change down here, it will affect the rest of the loop. So notice if I take those kicks out, it changes the way it sounds. The other way to create a drum loop in Ableton is to uh, simply play it in. And um, playing it in is kind of fun because you can add it layer by layer. And I'll go ahead and, and delete all of this stuff here and start from scratch. So I'm going to use the 808 emulator that I used before. I'm going to make sure my tempo is low enough. And I'm also going to activate record quantization. Record quantization um, quantizes your notes as you record them into your sequence. And remember that quantizing means that we are popping our notes into time, into tempo, and according to the tempo grid that we select. So that means if quarter note equals 80 and we want to play 16th notes, our, our notes as played will pop into uh, the 16th note grid accordingly. So to enable record quantization, the best way to do that is through the edit menu, go down to record quantization, and its default is to none. So we're going to set it to 16th note quantization. For this purpose, that's our best one. I don't need to necessarily select uh, a, an amount of measures down here, but I do need to select this loop ribbon, just like we did before. And I need to select this loop function. And I need to select this overdub button, the plus. Doing so basically will let me go back and forth through this region that I'm going to create and add it instrument by instrument. So if I hit the record button up here with the plus and the loop enabled, it will loop through my measure according to whatever time I have selected up here. So make sure that this ribbon is going to give you the amount of time you need. And so since it's recording and it's loop and it's overdubbing, I can add layers as I wish. Now notice as I add layers, my rhythm is not going to be perfect, but after it passes through one loop, it will perfect my rhythm. Um, So if I hit stop with the space bar, notice that it printed my loop as I performed it overdubbed. Okay, that's because I had the, this plus button selected and this loop button selected. If I go down to my region now in the sequencer, you'll notice that if I try to drag it outward, it's not going to loop for me because I don't have this loop button selected down here. Okay, so this is for the transport 
this is for the particular clip that I just created. So uh, if I go up here, turn off these functions at the top, make sure that this loop button is enabled and click it outward. I can now loop the sequence that I created. And just like before, if I change something in the original, it will affect the rest of them. Okay, so this and these are ways in which we can make um, a drum sequence in Ableton and loop it outward. Uh, don't forget to change that tempo. 120 is kind of fast. Thank you.